Happy Valley is a small informal settlement in the community of Table Butte. Yet it is so much more than that. The people of Happy Valley capture your heart from one conversation to another. We're so grateful that we're here to see how the ocean brings out the innocent and gentle side. So this was something that God had laid on my heart that um, somehow we as a church need to get involved in Happy Valley, but not to do that from our own kind of strength, you know. So that was something that I had. Now, one of the, the kind of co-leaders of Christian Service Cape Town, John is part of the congregation here. Um, and I got chatting with him the one time. Um, I don't know when exactly, but at some point we got chatting. And I was just sharing with him this heart for me of, of, hey, we need to get into the community as a church. We need to do something here. Um, and then he said, oh, hey, from a Christian surfers uh, Cape Town perspective, they've been doing a lot of thinking and about how can we re get into Happy Valley and do some uh, outreach there. They were starting to feel that it would be more useful to have a more focused approach as to which kids specifically they work with. Because the outreach has previously had just been if there were kids on the beach, we would kind of just invite them to come and join the, the ministry. And they thought that there would be this great opportunity to get a more focused approach and work specifically with kids from Happy Valley. Um, and so John and I chatted about this a number of times about the church at Christian Surfers and how can we get together and get into Happy Valley. Um, then one, I think it was a Dorney, um, a couple of us went down to the beach to go and surf. And I was sitting with Cleo, who, um, who is part of the, one of the, the families that's part of Christian Surfers, Cleo and Jordi. Um, and I was chatting with Cleo because she was uh, not in the water at that time. So her and I were sitting on the beach and we were chatting. And she had shared then with me about how their family has been wanting to also get into Happy Valley. Uh, this came about because I was chatting with her once again about the desire for the church to get into Happy Valley, for the church to do something in the community. And then she said, oh, hey, uh, as a family, we've been talking about wanting to get into Happy Valley. And so we just start finding these moments of people in the community all finding or having a similar desire to do something in Happy Valley. So we already had um, a, a connection that we wanted to make as we came into Happy Valley already, thanks to Jordan and Cleo, um, knowing this person, this guy uh, who's head of the community. So our, our goal and mission was to just establish connection with them and then from there kind of branch out to the parents and the kids. Um, and we just, you know, don't know anything about heading into this community. Um, it does look a little bit dodged from the road. So we kind of like going to just the mission is going to walk in there. But we noticed this guy on the side of the road selling wood and we just introduced ourselves and his name was Sean. And uh, I kind of just explained, hey, Sean, um, we want to go into the community. Do you know this person's name? Uh, apparently, they head the like their leaders here in the in the community, and um, and so he was kind of saying, "Oh yeah, 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 I know, I know. They, I'll, I'll, I'll show you where they live." But before that, I was just explaining what we're here for. Like, we want to really we Christian from a group called Christian Surfers. We want to run a little program and take the kids surfing, basically. We run a really cool. Um, outreach program with them and you know we love Jesus and we just want to pour um, uh, we, we feel that God's put this on our hearts and he stopped there and he looked at me like with these amazed eyes and he was like I was just telling the kids yesterday that they were all down and looked like they were just you know really quite uh, feeling despondent uh, because of the situation that they live in and he said, guys, don't lose hope with God. Anything is possible. He can do anything. Don't lose hope. And he said, now nah, you guys come. Like he was just in his eyes lit up. And it was, it was like so cool for us to see because we were like, wow, what an awesome connection already. We could see from the get go, like God's like felt like a little divine appointment because we've never seen that guy again. <laughs> and, um, and he... Um, basically took us into the community, introduced us to, um, uh, I think the leader at the time or parents house. And basically from meeting one of the parents, uh, chatted to them what we're about. 
and then went and spoke to another parent and another one and eventually like the kids saw us already and um, as we were talking to the parents what we wanted to do we were also telling the kids hey this is who we are we surfers we love jesus we call christian surfers and we want to start taking you guys into the water doing um cool cool surf training and, and everything with that and um and uh you just saw the stoke on these kids' faces light up and that time and interaction with them was so good because we rocked up and and you still saw um, these kids with not much, you know. There was a little old trampoline there. Not a trampoline, it was a bed mattress. It was a bed mattress. And these kids were doing backflips off it and laughing and playing with each other and just filled with so much joy and, and stoke. Um, and obviously this brought out even more, but it like lit up our hearts, Andrew and myself, to just see um, these kids with so little, but yet filled with so much joy. Our typical outreach day looks like a 9.30 a.m. start with the leaders. We'll meet and discuss what the plan is for the day, if we have any special speakers or if we have any new ideas that we want to try out. Um, at about 10 o'clock the kids will start arriving and as soon as they arrive we try and get them organized and settle down a little bit after we greeted them. Um, Wetsuits will then be assigned. We usually pack them out before the kids arrive, have them from the smallest to the largest. As soon as they've got their wetsuits, we'd also have established who the leader is that will be taking each kit. So we'll have two kits per leader. Um, then we'll split off between the younger guys and the older guys. And there'll be someone that has prepared a message for them. It'll usually be quite a short message, sometimes a little testimony. Always gospel-centered. And yeah, once the messages are done, We'll do a warm-up, a game, icebreaker, anything like that. And then we'll get the kids assigned to boards and your leader will then start taking the kids into the water once we've done the basic safety drills and all those things. At the start of the outreach, we had families and individuals make turns to get the food, to prepare the food and then hand it out on the day of outreach. We have now subsequently grown thanks to community, thanks to partnerships, and most of all, thanks to God, he's just provided everything that we need from wetsuit boards, foods, hot chocolate, juice, time, hands, everything. Um, we are so grateful and it's such a big thing to see how the little bit we had in the beginning has now grown. And not grown because of one or two people, but grown because God chose to run with us and we are just here to be the hands, take that step. So we are very thankful for everyone that's helped. We also just trust in God for um, a couple of things like wetsuits. Kids are in tiny, tiny kids, and some of them are wetsuits like four sizes too big for them. Funny to watch, but not cool for them to get in the water. And um, yeah, just boards. And our, our dream is just to see, you know, a little base to keep all the stuff for them and for them to come down to the beach and, and, and have a place where they can surf during the week. Um, and, and just keep the gear there. And there's always more. In a mission, there'll always be more. It's whenever I've seen other missions in whatever departments, where it's the feeding schemes at schools, where it's, you always talk to these guys and they're like, just frothing to do more. <laughs> you do a lot and that's already a lot, but there's always just extra, extra, extra. And, and we still scratch like at base level with these guys. So there's always, there's just big needs that we're trusting the Lord for. And, um, and it's so epic to just know that he's with us and he's full for us um, and as we can see already uh, what he's what he's doing and providing so yeah if you had to ask me if there was hope and light in that community Alfred said definitely. There's hope, light, love, laughter in the community of Happy Valley.